Is it any wonder that he found it difficult to expose his feelings? Is it any mystery that he hardened his heart, that he raised the emotional ramparts? And most of all, is it any wonder why he pushed his sons so hard to succeed as performers so that they could be saved from what he knew to be a life of indignity and poverty? I have begun to see that even my father's harshness was a kind of love, an imperfect love, to be sure, but love nonetheless. He pushed me because he loved me, because he wanted no man to ever look down at his offspring. And now, with time rather than bitterness, I feel blessing. In the place of anger, I have found absolution. And in the place of revenge, I have found reconciliation. And my initial fury has slowly given way to forgiveness. Almost a decade ago, I founded a children's charity called Heal the World. The title was something I felt inside me. Little did I know, as Shmuley later pointed out, that those two words form the cornerstone of Old Testament prophecy. Do I really believe that we can heal this world that is riddled, that is riddled with war and hate and genocide even today? And do I really think that we can heal our children, the same children who, as the papers reported, this morning can walk into a high school in San Diego and shoot down two beautiful students just at the beginning of their lives. A horrifying reminder of the guns and hatred that shot through Columbine almost two years ago. Or children can beat a defenseless toddler to death like the tragic story of Jamie Bulger. Of course I do. Of course I do. Or I wouldn't be here tonight. But it all begins with forgiveness. Because to heal the world, we first have to heal ourselves. And to heal the kids, we first have to heal the child within, each and every one of us. As an adult and as a parent, I realize that I cannot be a whole human being, nor a parent capable of unconditional love, until I put to rest the ghost of my own childhood. And that's what I'm asking all of us to do tonight. Live up to the fifth of the Ten Commandments. Honor your parents by not judging them. Give them the benefit of the doubt. That is why I want to forgive my father and to stop judging him. I want to forgive my father because I want a father. And this is the only one that I've got. I want the way of my past lifted from my shoulders. And I want to be free to step into a new relationship with my father for the rest of my life, unhindered by the goblins of the past. In a world filled with the hate, we must still dare to hope, keep hope alive. In a world filled with anger, we must still dare to comfort. In a world filled with despair, we must still dare to dream. In a world filled with distrust, we must still dare to believe. To all of you tonight who feel let down by your parents, I ask you to let down your disappointments. To all of you tonight who feel cheated by your fathers and mothers, I ask you not to cheat yourselves further. And to all of you who wish to push your parents away, I ask you to extend your hand to them instead. I am asking you, I am asking myself to give our parents the gift of unconditional love so that they too may learn how to love from us, their children, so that love will finally be restored to a desolate and lonely world. Shmuley once mentioned to me an ancient biblical prophecy which says that a new world and a new time would come when the hearts of the parents would be restored to the hearts of their children. My friends, we are that world. We are those children. Mahatma Gandhi said, the weak can never forgive. Forgiveness is the attribute of the strong. Tonight, be strong. Beyond being strong, 
rise to the greatest challenge of all, to restore that broken covenant. We must all overcome whatever crippling effects our childhoods may have had on our lives. And in the words of Jesse Jackson, forgive each other, redeem each other, and move on. This call for forgiveness may not result in Oprah moments the world over, with thousands of children making up with their parents, but it will at least be a start. We'll all be so much happier as a result. And so, ladies and gentlemen, I conclude my remarks tonight with faith, with joy, and excitement. From this day forth, let a new song be heard. Let that new song be the sound of children laughing. Let that new song be the sound of children playing. Let that new song be the sound of children singing. And let that new song be the sound of parents listening.